Julie Rome, I'm so excited to have you here today. Uh, you're the Chief Marketing and Experience Officer with Party City, and I hear that you are making joy easy. How easy has it been to make joy easy in the past year? Tell me a little bit about uh, what that experience has been like. Well, certainly, as, as I am fond of saying, party and pandemic were not synonymous. Um, so it was not as intuitive, maybe, as, as one would think when you're working for a party company, a celebrations company. But, you know, it also is true that in times of pandemic, and especially the one that we experienced, I just... Joy was more necessary than ever before. People needed it, even though they couldn't experience it in the same way that they traditionally had. And so we felt certainly, I mean, look, we're a public company and certainly we owed it to our shareholders to to um, to drive party and uh, celebration regardless. But we actually, as a new leadership team, and we are a new leadership team, I mean, all of us were, you know, some of us came on during the pandemic. I came on three months before the pandemic, our CEO five months before the pandemic. I mean, so it's it's like it's a really, really new team. And we had a mission of trying to make joy easy and to to move us from being just the provider of the party goods to the to the provider of the entire party experience. And so we felt an obligation, truly, again, not just from a financial perspective, but from what we signed up for. To, to do something and kind of is in our own, you know, social give back way to be able to give back something that we actually could. And we are celebration experts. And so we, we just leaned in and we, you know, the things that a lot of retailers did with same day delivery and curbside and those things, of course, but with regard to what we do uniquely, um, you know, delivering balloons and helping people create virtual parties. And uh, this time last year, graduation, I actually had a senior in high school who graduated in 2020. And, you know, we had, uh, we had already been thinking about it. We had built these graduation car kits. So, and we, because people was doing, they were doing parades and these personal signs and that you could put in your yard and put on the streets. And so we, we made those kits easy where you could buy it all in one. And we gave, little how-to videos and we had this inspiration and we had influencers who were there to show you how they were using it. And it was that kind of thing, those sort of the free tips, the ideas, the how-tos, um, and then trying to like put it all together in a simple kit to make shopping easy and the, and the actual, you know, overall putting it together easy. That was really how we came to life best in terms of helping people experience joy during a pandemic was through some of that innovation. And, and I'm just, I'm pleased to say we were able to do that again, you get, we're not perfect. And so, you know, when we fail, it hurts more because it's somebody's important event. And so we take that really seriously, but when we succeed, we, we are really proud to be part of, of these really memorable moments for people. And that's, that's what keeps us going. It's one of the, it's why I love, I mean, look, I, I've never been a, look zoom zoom back zoom screenscapers or zoom backdrops weren't a really a thing before really? the pandemic. But we've had the most fun, you know, being able to lean into who we are. And I I always like to say it's it's the best to be able to go to a job where I have meetings on balloons all the time, or you know, birthdays or a Halloween meeting or a you know graduation meeting or like the like you know it's it's a it's a it's a new thing for me with this company and. Um, it's, it's fun. I don't, I don't know that I could ever go back and have regular meetings on, uh, you know, I don't know, like just, just plain Not old, food. I don't know, widgets. Yeah. So. <laughs> it was that great thing that I think you said when we were chatting the other day around, you know, I challenge anyone to receive a balloon and not smile, which I, by the way, I just, I had a vision when you talked about that. I was like, what a wonderful video series, right? Just of someone going around giving out balloons and seeing if anyone could actually remain dour when that happened. If we have these great, we have several videos like that of people where we've, we've done that. It's almost like the, uh, uh, you know, those flash mobs, except for that we, we would send out our own employees to these towns with these, these balloons and we would just randomly hand them out to people, you know, they're shocked and surprised. Everybody smiles. How do you not smile when you're handed a balloon? 
Right, absolutely. Well, we're going to talk a little later um, in this discussion about pivots, which I know is something that is really, uh, that you've really leaned into. But I mean, you joined Party City in December of 2019. You have a plan, I'm sure, about um, how you're going to land, all of the things that you're going to accomplish. How did you begin to break down what needed to change, you know, as 2020 started to unfold? Like, what was sort of in your toolkit? Um, from an innovation and just an, an adapt, like an adaptation standpoint, like what, how did you break that down? Well, you know, so again, it was a new team. So we had, you know, that's always, there's a good and a bad in that, right? The, 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 the good is that we were all new and we had all signed up for this, this crazy ride. And it was a transformation. We knew that. Um, and so we were overly committed, just like all enthusiastic new employees are. Um, and we, we just saw the goodness in it and we weren't necessarily maybe as waylaid as we would have been, had we been longtime employees of a pandemic of like, Oh, well, I guess we'll just sort of muddle through. We were just the opposite. We were gung ho. We were like, we're just going to thrive and not simply survive this thing. And we took this transformation strategy that we'd been building and we just went for it. We were like, look, you know, there's no, what's the harm? I mean, we had to cut back on like, certainly, you know, as everybody, we had to cut back on lots of things. I, I didn't spend as much at advertising at all. I think I cut it out completely, but we leaned in instead to the things that were almost, you know, free, which was, you know, how do I create this consumer generated content? How do I create these, like for the virtual parties, how do I, like all those kinds of things, how do we create itineraries for people and post them so that they can see them and how to do a virtual birthday party? I mean, it's one thing to buy a kit of stuff. What do I do now? You know, or like last summer, you know, as I'm sitting here in my backyard, I know it's hard to tell from the screen, but I'm in my backyard. This is my office. Uh, when it's nice out, I have my extension cord. Um, but you know, when you think about like your backyard and you thought about summer and then you thought last year, oh, for all those parents who had kids who couldn't go to summer camp anymore. And yet they parents had to work and the kids are home and they're not in school. They're not in summer camp even day camp, what do I do with them? And so we, we, we used our mom influencers to come up with a bunch of summer camp backyard itineraries. And then here's a host of things you can buy with them. Some of it didn't even require you buy things from us. It was just a list of things because we, again, felt that obligation as the you know celebration experts to lean in and help people help people find joy, even when they were really stressed. And so, um, you know, that's, that's kind of how we, we just, we didn't, peel back. We, we actually just doubled down on our strategy and, um, we just try to do it in more scrappy ways. I mean, sort of scrappy was the name of the game and, and, you know, having, having people share their, their itineraries and us sharing it, that's, that's nearly free, you know, to do. And that's where, you know, that's the beauty of the celebration industry too, is that people post their pictures. They love to post pictures of their celebration. And so we can lean into those people and be like, oh my God, we love that. Can we share that here? Can we share that there? People love to have their photos shared, of course. So, um, you know, so that was, that was, a, I think, a benefit and one that we just, we just leaned into heavily. Yeah, I think that was one of the the first things that jumped out to me when I was looking at what Party City was doing, particularly on social media, was that, um, you know, you really sort of leaned into it. I think many brands went dark or pulled back because they weren't really, you know, they were worried about um, not striking the right tone with consumers. Right. What was the role of social media for you as you were sort of moving through a lot of this change? It was like all of it. I mean, so the role of social media yeah, it was came like, across. Yeah, it really came. hundred percent. I, you know, we 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 found influencers. We used, like I said, consumer generated content. Um, you know, social, and I understand because we thought about it too. Like, do you really talk about joy and celebration? Will people, you know, look? I mean, there's like I'm fully vaccinated now, and it's just it's super liberating. But before we had the vaccine and. Um, you know, people were, there was a lot of shaming when you heard of people having pe parties together and it was a super spreader event. Like, you know, we have all these new terms that we, we live with now, <laughs> thanks to the pandemic. But, um, you know, see, so there was a worry about like, well, if we go out and talk about the ways to do these celebrations, are we going to be accused of this? But we, you know, we decided we just, what well, we will just do it responsibly. I mean, we, we weren't advocating for, we weren't selling sets we, we do, but we didn't put that front and center of sets of 50 or a hundred like that. We were doing the small sets, like the eight we were, 
and it was virtual kits. It's for virtual parties. It's for the parade. It's for things that were being, you know, being used as a safe way to celebrate. And we were advocating for safety. We had a whole page dedicated to safe celebrations. We had a whole page dedicated to how we were, we were using safety as a guise, even though, you know, where where we were leaning into it for how we were running our stores and how we were dealing with our associates. Um, You know, it's, there's a, there's a lot of goodness, I think, with being transparent and that's what we tried to be. And, you know, thankfully we didn't really, we didn't get any backlash or pushback, which is always the risk when you're, when you're in the social sphere, because you're exposing yourself and you're putting yourself out there. But we felt as long as we were being transparent and honest and people could see, you know, our motivation for, for what we were doing and how we were doing it and that they could see the thoughtfulness that went into it, that we would be okay. And and we were. Right. And you weren't just sort of powering ahead as if nothing were going on. You were sort of very, very aware of that. So, I mean, one of the things that, that I'm hearing a lot about, you know, that is sort of top of mind for many marketers is staying close to what's happening in culture. And I think never has that been such a moving target as it has been in the past, you know, year, year and a half. Um, What are you seeing now? I think one of the great uh, ways you described it when we first chatted was that it was like this pent up party and that was the next phase. Can you tell me a little bit about, you know, how you're staying close to your consumer and sort of learning when you can really turn the dials up and down? Well, we do a ton of social listening. We also um, have a lot of research that's out there that we, because we we see it as our responsibility to be trendsetters as much as following trends. Um, You know, TikTok's a great place to see some of those uh, become real. But, um, you know, the... The interesting thing you mentioned it is that what you, and you see it everywhere with all the research, the pent up party, because it really is, that's, that's been my term. The public term that I've seen read over and over is it's the roaring twenties again, Mm -hmm. um, in the new twenties, the 2020s, not the 1920s, um, is people are, they're so hungry to celebrate. And so we, of course, love that. And we want to help people. But we're also super cognizant of the fact that we aren't fully open yet. I mean, today happened to be, you know, as we're, as we're doing this, like I just saw that the CDC came out saying that if you've been fully vaccinated in your two weeks post your second, you no longer have to wear a mask indoor or outdoor unless you're in federal, you know, airports, planes, sure, trains, yeah. like that. but you're not anywhere else. And it's, it's like this, this rush of relief. And so you see people, I've got friends who are doing Vax parties. They got the Vax cup, they got team Moderna, team Pfizer cups. And by the way, we make these, right? So like you can get those, like we can get them made. People are leaning in so heavily, but I, what we're trying to encourage is people leaning in in the smart way, right? Which is still like, we're going to follow the CDC mandates too. And so we're going to help people we're going to help people. We're going to promote the most responsible type of celebration we possibly can, but there is a huge energy for it. And I do believe, you know, we've, as we think about what we've learned from the pandemic, what things will take with us. Um, and I don't mean like, <laughs> I don't mean viruses and vaccines, but I mean, things like learnings, <laughs> behaviors, right. Um, working from home. I think hybrid is a bigger thing. Sorry. I think, you know, now we're going to have more traffic and we're going to have, we're going to have that noise back in our yeah, lives. The sound effect. Thank you. <laughs> right, you the sound effect. Um, but we're, we also, I think I've, at least I can speak personally for me and I have seen some evidence of this in some of the research that people are so much more appreciative and aware of the value of these relationships that we all have together and that they are precious and that, you know, too many of us lost loved ones or, you know, whether it was because of the, the virus or, or for other reasons over that we weren't able to be with because of the the virus. And it's a very real, it's a very real thing for people to be able to know that every moment is precious and we want to be able to help people to make them memorable, to do that. And it can, it doesn't have to be a milestone marker. It doesn't have to be the anniversary or the birthday or the wedding or the baby shower. It can literally be just, you know, sending somebody a balloon to let them know you're thinking of them. It can be, let's get the girls together for drinks and let's, let's make it a theme. Let's not just do it. Let's make it memorable. Like, so that we can say, Oh, remember when we did that Vax party and I was team Moderna, you were team Pfizer. 
you know, those little things like bringing the balloon, bringing the cup, bringing the, the little things that you do create, it's like that extra that is so easy, that is totally inexpensive, but will forever in your brain make that more special than just your average, let's just get together for dinner. Right. And that's the kind of thing that we're trying to celebrate. The everyday celebrations is really where we as a company are trying to focus more of our energy. Yeah, well, it's, it's an incredible theme because I feel like when people think about what we learned in COVID and what some of the changes were, a lot of it is what we stripped away, right? Like we stripped away travel, we stripped away, you know, a lot of, you know, high heels and like all sorts of stuff. Right. So it's nice that this is maybe something that we bring back um, that we wouldn't have bothered to do before because we didn't necessarily appreciate how special it was to, to be together. Right. And that it's like these little moments. And now we, because I think we've had to learn how to make moments special where we couldn't be together, whether it was like bringing, you know, favors or something to a zoom call. It's now a bit more natural to be like, I'm just going to judge up this little, you know, my little dinner party with a little balloon centerpiece, or I'm going to, I'm going to have like, you know, we did a, we did a quick, um, you know, Kentucky Derby and I got the little silver part. We sell the silver metal cups that has the, the, the mint julep recipe on the outside and the Derby. Like we just got those to have because it just, it's just a little thing, but then people are all like, oh my God, this is so fun. Like to have this guy, it's those little things that I think that we are, I, I'm super excited and hopeful that we take with us, not just for the benefit of the company, but because I think it, I think it's just great for the human spirit. Yeah. I think, I think it's heightening experiences, right? It's, I, I really love that. Um, so, so, so thinking, I guess now back over your career and you're in this, in this incredible role at this incredible time, as you reflect back, what has been the most influential decision that you've made throughout your career? And that could be just to prepare you for where you are now, or just, you know, in general for, for your life. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, of course. I mean, you know, I, um, I think when we spoke, I mentioned that, uh, I, I now host a podcast as a passion project called the Thank conversation. I, have, I, I did go on and, and look through that. There's just some incredible stories there. Yeah. There's some, and I just, I loved it. I did, it's a passion project for everybody listening. I'm not pandering. I don't make any money. It costs me money. I do it because I, I, it's kind of a give back thing for me. It's called the conversational. It's on all the, it's on Spotify and Apple and it's on my website, my personal, web, my personal website, not the company. It's not a company thing. Um, but it is sort of dedicated to what you're saying, which is these pivotal moments. I call them the, you know, hopefully people aren't offended. I call them the holy shit moments or I hashtag Hoshimo. Hoshimo. We, all, we all have them. Kind of Japanese, um, I like it. They're, they're the ones I know. I actually looked it up. Somebody in Japan has a Hoshimo company. They don't use it. And I was, cause I thought I was like, oh, I don't want to call it Hoshimo and have it like be a word that means something like in Japanese or something like, you know. Hoshi means to want. So it's interesting. Really? Yeah. Is there a mo for anything in there? Does it any does that add any flavor to it? No. No, I don't okay. think so. <laughs> want mo. Okay. To so want mo. That's what I want. And with the MO at the end. Yeah. So I'm it's like a Japanese. And, like, and Hoshi like, said this. another way, it means star. So it's like all of this. Oh. Stuff. All right. Well, these are all good words. It could have been bad. Those are words, those are phrases I will take. Right. Okay. That's good. Um so they're, they're dedicated to people's holy shit moments or Hoshimo's because I, I, I know that as I talk to people, when I talk about my career, um, you know, there's a feeling that I always get, especially with younger people when I have two college age boys that it's like, I can't, or well, those people, like something was special about them. And certainly I'm not taking away any of the specialness of any of my guests. Um, they're all special, certainly to me, but we, they aren't special. I think that people think that they all have, they were just smarter and had a better plan and followed that plan and it all just worked out. And the truth is, is that there isn't a single successful person. And again, success can be defined in many, many ways. Um, not just with title and, and money. That's not, uh, it's lots of other things. And my guests have all those, but, um, it is, it is really, the fact that when they hit those holy shit moments and we hit many of them, how they chose to deal with them, how they, whether they chose to, to pivot or whether they chose to double down and just go after it more. And, and there's different answers and you only, you can know, but it is, it are, it are those Hoshimos that I think make us who we are and in, inevitably are, are how, what we end up being known for. And 
so my own, of course, was, it was super public and prolific. I was famously fired from Walmart once upon a time, 15 years ago, and it was big and ugly and prolific and horrible. And I pivoted to running my own company. I just, I was a little bit of PTSD and, um, decided to run my own company and be a consultant. And I was frightened. It was the scariest thing I've ever done. I was also like this litigation. It was this horrible, you know, and it was frightening. It was, you know, it it was stressful. I had never gone on my own before. had never even thought I would go on my own before. And it turned out I was pretty good at it. And, um, it introduced me to many other industries and, um, startups and big companies and a networking and speaking and things like I, you know, some things I had taken for granted, maybe like the networking and some of the speaking. And so it just, it made me much more appreciative. It also made me more inquisitive and it was very humbling. Um, the whole experience was humbling, but being a consultant was a, is something that is like, you have to humble yourself to just be a servant to whoever, whatever company or, or source you can be to make them successful. And that was really good for me. Um, and it turned into many things. I mean, it was from that, that I ended up then going to SAP and then going from there to, um, a a private equity held company called Abra. And then we sold that. And then the, you know, the, one of the board members there brought me to party city. And so there's, there's, you know, it's, it is for me, the, the, the biggest pivots in life are again, how we double down and it's not easy, but it is really important that, um, I think that we, we acknowledge the, that I think it's important for everybody to acknowledge the fact that things aren't going to go right all the time and that you're going to have these moments and that those moments, while it's crazy, I think should be embraced. And you would, I would have never gone back to myself and be like, embrace this. This is great. Like it was horrible. And I would have figured out any way to not go through that again if I could. But once you get through that hard part is to embrace it and be like, what is it that I'm going to take from this? What am I going to learn? And I ended up having to go through that sort of self journey again. And I'm so glad I did because without that really horrible experience in my life, I wouldn't be here. And I love where I am. I talk to my kids about this and it's like, without like, they love where they are. And had I been on a different track, it would affect their lives. So we affect more than ourselves. This is, and this is like the empathy you have to have for like, you know, the decisions I make aren't just about me. They're about everybody around me. And, um, you know, so it's, it's bringing them along with the journey with me has been, has been great. And now I've learned to be like, talk to them more about some of these decisions and what we want to do. And, um, you know, it's, it, I, I think that these pivotal moments in life, it's a pure, it is a passion for me. Obviously I dedicated my podcast to it, but it's a, it's a passion for me is now I've got young adults and their friends. And, uh, you know, I, a lot of them are, some of them are marketing. And so I do interviews with them too, to try to help them. And it's, you know, I want to pass this message along because I think that they're, I think the world of social media today puts such a shiny veneer over life. Everyone's life. In a career, you are going to hit these walls and social media is not going to help you because you're, you're not going to, it's going to be so hard. Like everyone's going perfectly. And when you talk about, you know, you, you mentioned like, Hey, I asked myself these questions in my darkest moment. Was that about changing your focus? Like how did you sort of move through your own Hoshima? Was it about, you know, how, like, did you just redirect what you were saying to yourself? Like what, what did that actually look like for you? Yeah, it was, it was a lot. I mean, like some days, like you just, I didn't, I just want to go back to bed. Like I didn't want to, but I I, I'm, I was the breadwinner. I had to get like, I, my kids had to eat and you just like, so there's, it, it, and I, I think that's important for people to know too. It's not like, oh, strong people. They just get up and every day it's like, they feel you know, great. Like, they just, yeah, yeah. you're gonna, they're gonna be bad days. They're gonna be shitty days. And it, it's how you can respect those and be like, it's okay. Like every day, you know, it's okay. What am I going to make the best of this day though? even if it's not going to be one of the best days, how am I going to do the best I can in this day? And, um, I think setting little goals for yourself. And that's, that's what I did is like, I just would, I I would set goals for myself. Some people journal. I wasn't big on journaling, but I was big on sort of to doing. And I would, as a focus. Oh yeah. Yeah. I was a big to doer. And it's like, what can I do? 
How am I going to, cause that, that then helped me plow through there. For me, there was a mental, there was a mental release and like, let's, there's so much noise, especially, and it was personal. It was personal, which was the worst kind. Right. And how do you push that aside <clears throat> and then create a to-do list that I can power through? Cause then I, then I can shut some of that down be like, okay, I can only be the best me I can be. I can't, I can't change everybody's mind. I can't, I can't burn all my time trying to defend myself or to, I can't, right. That's I'm because then I'm giving energy to this thing that is taking away my spirit. I have to lean in and try to give energy to the thing that is going to best represent who I am and who I want to be and how I can be the best person and the give giving back that I can, and whether that's giving back like in a philanthropic way, or whether it's literally just giving back to, you know, the economy, to the world, to my kids, to my husband, to that, you know, those, those, those were the lists. And so I had lists of like, here's all the work things. And then here's the things I, I got to get done. Like, I really, I want to take my son here. I want to take my other son here. Like though, for me, that was how I did it. Yep. And you, you focused yourself on that. If, if you could go back to yourself early in your career and, and give yourself one piece of advice, Julie, what would that advice be? Huh. Yeah. Uh, we did, we talked about this too. And it, and I, and I, for the benefit of the listeners, I asked, would I go back and give myself because I have to relive those years in the decades that I was living them, or do I get to give it now? And I get to live in the decades now because, and I say that because the truth of the, the the truth of the world now, you know, everything changes is it's not that it's everything's better because I think everything is simply different. It's just how we, we embrace the world we're in. But the benefit of today is that there at least has been a me too movement and a black lives matter and, you know, no more Asian hate and like all these things that are now very much front and center part of our daily lives is important because it's created it's important for each of those initiatives and each of those, those movements, no doubt, but it's also important because it's just helped to create a heightened awareness and sensibility for people in total. And I, and I know people like it's overly PC. I don't see it about it as being politically correct. I think about it as being just simply more conscientious of, of, of other people and how, how we were brought up, how we see the world and the appreciation for others and how they, what their reality looks like and not necessarily reflecting our own reality on them and assuming that just because we got to grow up in a middle-class family where there was always food on the table with a parental unit that was together, that that's everybody's and so every... And, and even though we mentally know that, we don't physically understand that if we haven't lived that type of reality. Mm-hmm. And I say that because then if I go back the reality of when I was coming up was that women in male dominated industries, which, you know, there's still too many today, in my opinion, I think we should be have a better balance, but, but back then was that there, you had to, as a woman, and I knew it. I was, I was one of the few engineers at Purdue, female engineers. I went to business school and came out and went to automotive very male dominated, but I had an engineering degree and I was a hard worker. And I just knew that if I was going to go in and they were going to see a young blonde girl who was going to come in in sort of a, you know, business capacity that they're, they had stereotypes and perceptions. And I was going to need to work twice as hard, you know, have a thicker skin, be doubly prepared. I was going to have to do all those things. And I embraced that and accepted it. And just did that. And I rolled through. And as a result, I think I became more hardened in business. I tried to be empathetic to people, you know, but I think in business, I became hardened. You become very focused on your aspiration in your career and you're accepting these things that I don't think I should have accepted. I think, you know, I probably did a disservice. I don't know how much difference I could have made, but it, it's, you know, unless the first person does something, you know, the next person doesn't. So, you know, I, I probably should have done more was to, say no. Like when, when people were behaving badly or saying inappropriate things and not just letting it slide, like, you know, water off a duck's back, which is sort of how I learned to be like, don't let it bother. Like, like let them say what they want to say and just trudge forward and be successful. And, you know, you're rewarded and you're successful. And so then that becomes a validation of sort of, you know, your saying, look, you just have to ignore all that. It doesn't matter if it's right or wrong. You just have to ignore it and just go through and do, and just, you know, so 
I, I think I would today tell myself to have more empathy and not put the, put the ambition so far ahead and to look and just, is this right? I may be able to take it. I may be able to take it like the, but Mm. should I, would I, would I want this to happen to all the other females on my staff? No, I would have been a mother bear and said no, but if I'm letting it happen to me, I'm setting the example. And so that, that would have been the, that would have been probably advice to myself. It's always hard to know what you would have done back then, but I think, you know, I think speaking up and I mean, you've trailblazed in so many ways. So it's a, it's a really great perspective. So, so you're making joy easy right now. What's the next mountain to climb for you, Julie? What are you excited about as you stare out into the future? Well, look, making joy easy is an ongoing process. Uh, it's not easy and enough. Actual making joy easy is not, not easy, easy enough. <laughs> <laughs> we, I've got more work to do to make it actually really easy because it's not easy enough. And I'm sure some people are like, well, hey, I tried to do this and it wasn't very easy. I know we're, we're working on it. It's easier, but we're, we've got more to do. Um, look, I would love to, uh, you know, I'm at a point in my career, which is great where this, I, I'm a sucker for a transformation. I, I get to choose you know, to be here. Um, I chose this company on purpose. You know, it's, um, I, I love that I'm able to do something that feels like there's some, it's not just a, uh, monetary pursuit or a career pursuit that it's actually doing some good. And that's a hard thing to find in corporate life. I, you know, like, you, you know, it's not that these companies are doing bad, but are they really making things better? Um, Mm. and so I, you know, I do, I do, I do like the work that we're doing and we're, we're trying to forge new social ground too. And so I, I love that. I love that for this company. We've just got so much more to do here. So that's a very big focus, but you know, beyond what's next is um, you know, I, I've got two boys that I want to see to be successful men. And so I take uh, my, my mom role pretty seriously. My husband and I are, uh, near, well, we're empty nested officially, but no, nobody's really empty nested these days. In the pandemic. <laughs> um, but, um, but you know, the, it's, it's, uh, it's a bit of balance of life more so than I think I've ever had, um, as, is trying to like put family in the mix here in a, in a bigger, in a bigger way. And then, you know, for career wise is this continued philanthropy of, of not just with the company, but, uh, with some of the other endeavors that, um, you know, I think now I have, I have time to pursue now that my kids are, are, are emptied, are emptied, almost emptied again, almost re-emptied back out. Um, so those are, you know, that's, that's a, it's, it's a privilege to be able to do that. Um, and it's something that I, um, you know, not just the podcast, but some, I'd like to be able to, to dive in more. Um, I've got several different pursuits out there, but that's, that's kind of where I'd like to see myself go. And again, it's a privilege to be able to do that once you get to a point in your career to be able to give back and then maybe on some boards and things too, but we'll, we'll get there. That's amazing. Well, listen, thank you for being here and and sharing your story, Julie. It's always such a pleasure to chat with you. Um, And we really look forward to, to chatting more in the future, but thank you so much for being here. Oh, thank you, Tony. It was super fun. Thank you. Thanks, Julie.